吗？Three-dimensional God. I always say it's so nice to have a three-dimensional God, not just a one-dimensional God like they used to say back in Star Wars time. The Force be with you. I mean, how? Well, I want Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's that's good. So anyway, we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday today. It's good to see all of you here today. We have some visitors. Some of you may recognize Floyd and Ann. You want to introduce your family, Floyd? Yeah. The Ann and Emily, and of course, that's Ann and Floyd Barclays, so some of you might remember Ann and Floyd, so thanks. Yeah, good to see you. I used to go fishing with Floyd many years ago, and he survived. So, <laughs> so it's good to see you. Uh, we're gonna have a children's sermon if you wanna come up, uh, and also we got Sunday school, then you come back in when we uh, have communion, so you can do that if you want, uh, the Ann, okay, thanks, all right. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, Annalise, you got a little uh, fundraiser you want to talk about? It has to do with your swimming. I know we help her with the Girl Scout cookies and also the children's toys, and now there's something new. Um, I'm doing a swim-a-thon next Sunday, June 7th. I'm asking for your support by pledging me. If you could pledge at least five cents a lap, the most it would come out to be five dollars. We have one hour to swim laps, and the most we can do is 100 laps. The funds go towards our travel account and help out the team as a whole. I would be happy and appreciate any help. Thank you. Okay, so for five dollars at the most, is all right? Five cents a mile, you're gonna do 100 laps. Wow, and that's June 7th, is that right? And so if you wanna contribute, that'd be great. So that's next Sunday. All right, so talk to Annalise. We'll be glad to support you. Pardon me? Yeah. 100 laps? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my dead body. Yeah. Okay. And today we're very blessed. Uh, we're going to have uh, Ted Gibbons give his witness on the fifth Sunday of every month. Well, every, every month it has five Sundays. Uh, it's always reserved for witness. So we also have a witness up at the Gathering North uh, today with Karen Brown. She's giving a witness up there. So this gives an opportunity. Uh, for people to get up and talk about how God's been 
working in her life and <coughs> is continuing to work in her life. So that's a, a great thing about witness. And uh, yesterday we had our Gathering North retreat. We had a great time. We got a good taste of the kingdom and had a lot of fun. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Who's, are you leading? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please rise. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Holy, holy, holy God, we worship and adore you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today in our worship, we long for a glimpse of your glory seen perfectly in Christ our Lord. As we worship, may we gain new insight about the mystery and the wonder of your love. And may we sense new ways to mirror that love in our world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the song. <laughs> above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The second reading is from the second chapter of Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man... A man arrested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. 
For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul in Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to uh, St. John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. And do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. And the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, that is the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. Children's sermon, don't come up. I got candy. <laughs> <laughs> I got candy. It sounds like a bribe, and it is. <laughs> You don't have to come up, but she's coming up for you. Okay. <laughs> her big sister is helping her come up. Thank you. Well, today is Holy Trinity Sunday, and we celebrate a God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we got three and one. And like I said at the beginning of the service, I like the idea that we have a three and one God. I mean, it'd be kind of boring if it was just God the Father, or just God the Son just God the Holy Spirit but we've got three in one when we talk about God the Father what comes to mind when you think about God the Father what do you think he's what he's a person very good and it's nice to have a personal relationship 
with a God that we can call our heavenly parent, who's also the omnipotent creator of the universe. And yet I can say, I have a personal relationship with this God who's like a parent to me, a heavenly parent that we call God the Father. I think that's pretty cool. And when you think of God the Son, what do you think about when we talk about God as Jesus? What do you think about? That means what? Is God the Father did what? He came where? Into where? He came into this world, is that right? And he, yeah, and he became one of us. And I like the idea that I'm a God that knows what it's like to be a human being. Because when I pray to him, I want to make sure that he understands what I'm talking about. And God as Jesus knows everything about what it means to be a human being. So when I pray, it's good to know that he understands what I go through. And we also have God, the Holy Spirit. When you think about Holy Spirit, what do you think about? Anything? He's always with us. Isn't that amazing? God the Holy Spirit means that God is always with us. As Jesus says, the Holy Spirit goes everywhere just like the wind. And it blows there and blows there and it just goes everywhere. And so we have a God that's with us always. Can't see him, but you know he's moving like the wind. And he's everywhere and you are. We can carry that Holy Spirit with you. So I like a God that's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because it helps me be the person that God wants me to be and I can also share this God with other people as a father son and Holy Spirit depending on what that person needs okay thank you very much here's your chocolate kisses that I promised you oh so hopefully you can eat chocolate kisses there you go one to you one to you Uh, the, the case is at the, on the table outside. Okay, you go to Sunday school, all right? Thanks, guys. You need this? Put them in the middle. That's for the camera lady. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Ted. Good morning, Ted. Um, <laughs> pleasure to be here. Um, the pastor asked me if I would be interested in bearing witness uh, to my journey with God. And I'd be ha I was very glad that he asked me. I thought that a couple months ago, I, I was kind of thinking that it would be great if if I could do that, because what I've found in the last, particularly in the last year, uh, has been very instrumental in uh, helping me uh, uh, gain uh, strength and walk in a different life, in, in a different way, uh, to to overcome uh, a lot of the problems that I was having. Um, I want to. Congratulate all the Blackhawk fans out there. <laughs> I want to make sure. <laughs> My talk is, is I'd like to think of it after going through the, uh, all my thoughts in the last week or so. I'd like to call this uh, God in the Rearview Mirror. And I started out, I was born in Canton, Illinois. My name's Theodore, actually, so my parents, I understand, uh, named me after Teddy Roosevelt, which I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I was born in uh, <laughs> September 26 of 1951 in a small town uh, by the name of Canton, Illinois, which is about 30 miles south and west of Peoria, Illinois. Uh, I grew up, it was a great place to grow up. We had about 12, 14,000 people in the town surrounded by corn fields, bean fields, and strip mines. Pretty much isolated from anybody and everyone, uh, un unlike Chicago here. My parents uh, were baptized in 1957 into the Wesley United Methodist Church. 
I did some research this week and found out the date of when they were both uh, baptized. And I, I didn't have my baptismal certificate at home. Thought I had it in a file, but I didn't. So I, I reached out to the pastor of that of the Western United Methodist Church, and he sent me back an email and said that uh, the only record he had of me was when I was confirmed uh, into the church on April 7th of 1963. So it's been over 50 years ago, uh, and I was baptized. It was a dual uh, a dual party there. I was baptized on that same day. And I knew I knew it was in the early 60s, but he confirmed that to me. I lived a life. I was a very happy kid growing up. I mean, I always had that baseball glove around my handlebars on my bike. Uh, I loved, uh, you know, I loved my parents, uh, and everything was great. Um, and we went to church, and I, I, I'll have to admit, uh, my love for my parents this week after going through all of this research became greater than it's ever been because of the fact that my parents I always knew were people who would do always wanted to do the right thing and the fact that they cared enough about me to get me into a uh, Christian church and have me baptized uh, it's I never realized uh, how much they really loved me because they yeah. did the right thing and I went to church every Sunday my mo mother uh, was a Sunday school teacher, and my dad was a, a lay person. He always helped out at church and always did what uh, people uh, requested of him. So I went to church and I went through school in Canton, Illinois. I graduated in uh, um, May of 19 or June of 1969. Uh, after that, I uh, I went to junior college in my hometown for a couple of years. And then I moved on uh, to finish up uh, at University of Missouri in Rolla, which is their engineering school. I graduated in uh, May of 1974 with a uh, degree in civil engineering. And I interviewed several companies at that time, and I ended up with, with a company that I took a job with uh, in Chicago. So I had only been in Chicago once in my life and didn't know too much what I was getting into. It was a very exhilarating time in my life. Um, I felt uh, a certain sense of uh, accomplishment getting to where I was. I moved to Chicago, uh, I had a good job. Uh, I had a lot of opportunities. And about that time, I think starting in high school, God was with me when I was a kid. Maybe through compliance, maybe I didn't know him as well as I should have. But he was there. Um, once I got out of high school, in high school and out of high school, God kind of take, took a secondary role. I, he was there, but I had been in that fast car going down my, my lane in uh, success in life, and he started to become smaller and smaller in that rearview mirror. I lived through the 70s at work. Uh, that might have been, uh, that was what a lot of people think of as the three, three martini lunch era. And uh, believe me, I, uh, I uh, emboldened that and lived that life uh, for many, many years. Uh, I met Jan Gibbons, uh, Janice Hamrick, in uh, September of 1976. And a year later, I think to the day, we, we uh, were wed. Uh, down at the St. Uh, Peter's Lutheran Church in Hannah, uh, Hannah City, which is a small church out in the country. And uh, she moved up here, and uh, we uh, moved about a little bit a after that. I, I started out in Lombard, where I lived, and we moved up to Hanover Park, and lived there for about nine and a half years. And uh, she found a job as a teacher, and uh, uh, I changed jobs uh, in uh, late 1986. In 1987, uh, we moved into our new home in, uh, uh, in Carroll Stream, and at that time, we uh, let me just say we found a church, Lord of Life uh, uh, Lutheran Church on Wise Road in Roselle, in, in Roselle, and we were there for about six years. I think we started there in 1980. Uh, when we moved it, uh, to Carroll Stream, we found uh, uh, Jan did a search, and she stopped in and. Uh, 1987, and I think it was November, December, and she met Pastor Dawson. 
And Pastor Dawson came over to our house and uh, we went to the Christmas Eve service there and, and we became a member of the church after that. So I've known, I've had the pleasure to know uh, Pastor and his wife and family for all those years, more than what, 28 years. And so uh, as life went along, uh, we had kids. Uh, my first, uh, son, my son Brandon was born in 1981. My daughter Paige was born in December of 1983. And we got into the church and God started to gain some space. He, he got there close to me in that rear view mirror and, and so he, uh, he gained on me. And uh, I went to Bible studies on Saturdays for a couple of years in 1989 and 1990. And I started to get some spiritualism uh, that I never really had before. And then somehow or other, uh, my job, I changed jobs in 19, uh, 1987. And somehow or other, I became a workaholic. I became a workaholic and I was in a, I was in a business position where I was meeting clients, I was attending uh, company functions, and my, I, I put my will in front of everything else because, hey, it's got me where it's at, where I'm at right now, and I can handle anything, and my will and God started to creep back away from me in that rearview mirror. That went on for many, many years. Uh, my partying and drinking continued. Uh, and then when my kids got older, back in the late 90s, uh, starting the late 90s, my daughter had some uh, some uh, some issues that she was dealing with. My son graduated in 1999. He got, went to Bradley University, graduated in 2003, couldn't get a job, uh, and was very frustrated. And there was a lot of depression uh, that crept into our household. Uh, it was overwhelming at times. My son, I knew, was depressed. My daughter had special issues. Uh, and myself, I became very depressed. And one of the ways that I dealt with that depression was I became remote to my family. I isolated. I started to drink more. I was only concerned about what I was doing at work. Uh, and it continued for a number of years like that. I went to church, I went to worship service, we stopped uh, going to uh, the LCM in about 2005. And I was going, but I was going in compliance because it was just something to do. I never really thought about it. And God crept further and further away in that rear view mirror. Well, you know, in 2007, I uh, got a DUI, drinking too much with a client. Got the DUI over in Ohio, over in Columbus, Ohio. I, I had to do time over there where I had to go to school for three days uh, in compliance to their law. I came back in Illinois, revoked my license. I didn't drive a car uh, for 14 months to the day. And that was, I didn't get my, I, I got my DUI on August 23rd of uh, 2007, and I got my license back in December uh, of that next year. But that wasn't, that was no big deal. To me, my will, you know, okay, so I don't have to drive, you know. I wasn't willing to admit that I needed something greater than myself to get through life and to, uh, to share my journey with. And so I was doing it purely on self-will. It always worked before, why not now? Mm -hmm. Well, I kept going, kept going, got through that, didn't stop drinking, just didn't get caught, I just didn't get caught again. And my life never really improved. Then in 2010, uh, the uh, wheels really fell off the, 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 the car, at least I thought they did. When my son died in uh, February 23rd of uh, 2010, and died, uh, it was a suicide. And my wife and myself and and my daughter uh, have had. Uh, it was in a, It was just an unbelievable scenario. Uh, we isolated. We didn't want to be around people. Uh, I picked up from there and just. I really wanted to, I, I was suicidal in the sense that I drank 
and I drank more and I didn't care. I was remorseful. I, was, I felt so much guilt for my son's death of what I could have done and what I should have done uh, and nurturing him better than, uh, than I did through, uh, throughout his life, especially when he got into college and out. And with my daughter's issues, I just, uh, I, I was beyond myself, but I was gonna do it with my own will. So I started to drink even more and became a full blown alcoholic. I was up to a pint and a half a day for about a vodka for about three years. And I was either gonna die or I was gonna have to live. And one day in oh, March or April of 2014, this had been going on. And by the way, it created a tremendous amount of problems with my wife and my daughter. My wife was gonna, uh, wife Jan was gonna probably go her own separate way. And uh, we had a lot of problems at home and my daughter, uh, my daughter didn't have much to do with me either, and I can't blame them. But all of a sudden, those wheels came off, and I ended up in a ditch. Well, guess what? Along that way, God started to come closer in that rearview mirror. I ended up in a ditch with a couple of blown tires, and it came. I came to the realization I couldn't do this anymore on my own. There had to be if I. If I had to live my life, if I died from alcohol, I couldn't do that to my wife. I couldn't do that to my daughter. Uh, it would be wrong of me. Um, and when I'm laying in the ditch, I, and I thought about this for a month or two, when I'm laying in the ditch, God came down and said, hey, you're, you're in a pickle. I can help you. As long as you believe in me and have faith in me, I'll get you into a program and I'll get you healthy again. And I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll work it out for you. All you need to do is just have faith. So that was in April 9th of 2014. I grabbed his hand. He pulled me up. I went into detox for two weeks at the Behavioral Health Center in Winfield. And I was an outpatient there for two more weeks uh, in Winfield. I, uh, I then got into a 12-step program. Uh, I found a sponsor through AA. Uh, and by the way, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention that my wife and I had been going to counseling for, for our marriage problems. For a couple of years, we had one lady, her name was Dee Dee, that was my counselor that I would see alone. And I finally admitted to her uh, on the 8th of April that I was, uh, I was drinking. She said, I knew it all along, but just didn't know how to approach you. And she called BHS and got me into the program. And the next day, Jan took me there and uh, admitted me to the, to, the, to the hospital or the BHS. And I, I want to thank Dee Dee from the bottom of my heart because it, without, she, was, she was very much a part of my being where I am today. Um, so I went through the program, I got through 12 steps. I have a, a sponsor that I still see regularly. I go to meetings every day. Uh, all of a sudden I had halfway through that experience uh, in AA, I had a spiritual experience I had no idea what was in store for me. I had no idea that a 12-step program was about God and finding God to uh, allow me to give those things up, give up my will and give my will to God and um, have him be present in my life. And I bought into that. I didn't buy into it. I just gave my life to it. And I didn't ask any questions and I followed suit. All of a sudden, in going through the steps, I had a spiritual awakening. I had a lot of baggage that I carried around with me throughout my life. And it started when I was in high school. I had resentments. I had, I had fear, fear that I'd never have enough money, fear that I wouldn't, you know, be the biggest dog on the, in the block. Uh, uh, fear about tomorrow and fear of what I did yesterday. I was angry at people. I had resentments. 
maybe in some ways they drove me, uh, but it wasn't in a good way. And through AA, uh, it gave me, and, and through the, uh, through the, uh, the gathering, I started uh, to realize that the gathering was not just something I needed to do uh, in compliance anymore. It was something that, I, that God wants me to do because throughout the whole, throughout all of this, I had a feeling that God had, he's doing this for me or I, I'm doing it and he's doing it for me, but he's got a bigger plan for me. Uh, and it became, I, I realized that, that that was the case and so, to this day, I've, I've been sober, or haven't had a drink in, uh, you know, almost 14 months, um, and it's uh, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, but that's where I'm at today. In April this year, I went to Emmaus. Uh, Emmaus for me was a walk to Emmaus. Uh, Emmaus to me was a basically it cemented what I had pick, been picking up over the last year through the AA program. Um, and it, it stripped me bare and it built me back up again. Uh, it was an amazing experience and I got to meet a whole lot of new people, uh, good men uh, at, that, uh, at that retreat. And one of the fellows that was there had been a, a recovered alcoholic for about 45 years. And he kept kidding me, he kept saying, he says, you know, did you see how this thing matched step four in the big book? And I said, yeah, that's amazing. You know, uh, and then we'd have, we'd go in and have another activity along the way, and he says, step 10, I says, I know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, or I might say, uh, oh, you know, and I says, I know, step seven. <laughs> it's amazing how the big, the, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is a condensed version of the things that I always needed to do through scripture and through the Bible and through worship. Uh, today I have the AA, I attend meetings regularly. I have a whole host of new friends. A lot of good men that have recovered from this dreaded disease, uh, that walk every day, and doing the right thing. I play golf with, uh, it's presented me with the opportunity to play golf every Saturday with AA men. So we have a meeting right there on the golf course <laughs> and it's it's wonderful. Um, and through worship, I, I attend, I, I make it a point to attend all the Bible studies I can um, and to attend here at the gathering every week. Um, and as I go along. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I wanted to just read a little a quick thing here. It was called the step, it's step nine, and it's the step nine promises. And it, it works for me, and I think it will work for anybody, but it says if we're painstaking about our phase of development, and that was the time I was at step nine out of 12, we are, we'll be amazed before we're halfway through. We're going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. We will not regret the past nor to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. Is that the case? Yes. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. The feeling of usefulness and self-pity will disappear. Yes. The feeling of we will lose interest in selfish things and gain interest in our fellows. Thank, uh, thank God. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and Outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. I think that kind of sums it up. And, uh, you know, that, that's one of my favorite passages in the big book. Going to Emmaus, I wanted to continue on that. Um, I received this cross, and on the back of this, it says, Christ is counting on you. Couldn't have came at a better time in my life. I will be retiring here in the next year or so, or at least going on part-time. And I'm starting to line up things that I need to do in my life to be of service to other people. There's so many needs out there and so many ways that we can help. I look at that statement as as responsibility that I'm willing to take. And I want people to keep around me to keep me accountable and ask me now and then what uh, what program are you working these days? 
It can be any, for my first and foremost is my wife and my daughter. I need, I, I've, I've started a program uh, with them. Uh, I want my life, wife's life to be better. Uh, it, I know it's gotten a lot better between the two of us. My daughter, I've got a closeness with her now that I never had before. And I, I try to help her every day of being a friend and a mentor in anything she wants to do. I want to help people at the gathering because they've been so instrumental in providing me the base and the faith uh, and support to in my journey to where I'm at right now. Um, and I want to continue that on. I want to help other people. I want to help alcoholics who are had the disease and are newly into the into the program. I want to be sponsored to them. I haven't yet, but I, I will be. Uh, and it will happen in, in God's time. Uh, I do want to get into uh, uh, going forward. I want to get into pads. Uh, I would like to work there a week. I've got the paperwork. I'll be signing up for that. And I've even thought about uh, getting into uh, uh, an organization like Big Brother, where for me, it's special if I can help uh, one young man in his life, that will help me honor my son and who he was. He was a good young man with, with problems. And if I can help one young man uh, in that effort, uh, it's, it's all worthwhile. And continuing to be part of the gathering and expand uh, in my spiritual uh, uh, faith and growth um, uh, you know, along those lines and to be of service to people here in the gathering, but mainly to my wife and uh, first of all to my wife and my daughter. Um, one of the things that uh, I do pray a lot, I do meditate, I try to do that every day in keeping with the 10th and uh, the 11th step in this little book here. Uh, the other thing, I, when I went to Emmaus, I was given this book here, it's My Time with God. It's a 15 minute devotional every day uh, yeah, for the entire year. And this in the, uh, the small version of the big book in this, I carry around with me in my bag all the time. I do this every, every morning when I'm on the train and it's amazing how reading scripture can start your day off on a whole different level a whole different plane and uh, so I'm, I'm trying to live that life that God gave to me and it become very clear to me I couldn't uh, uh, do what I, for myself what what he did for me it also reaffirmed uh, a thought that I had here recently I heard it in an AA meeting that uh, and it's so true that God brought us to this earth as spiritual beings to live the life in a human form and not the other way around and I, I truly believe that I want to thank uh, special thanks goes to Pastor Dawson who was the first person uh, other than my wife and my daughter was the first person I saw while I was in recovery he was right there and he's been with me all along in that journey, and I want to thank you so much for doing that. I'm very, very grateful to Pastor and his wife and everybody here. Uh, I mentioned uh, Dee Dee Smith. I'm thankful for her uh, being in my life. I'm thankful for my wife putting up with all of the Bolshevik that I put her through for all those years. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention, I really like this book because it was given to us at, at Emmaus free of charge. It was all part of it. And, uh, uh, and so going forward, uh, uh, you know, it's it's about staying connected and staying spiritually fit with uh, the God that I've come to know. He saved my life as all, and anything I do of being of service to other people, I've got a new friend that I can walk with and I can I can give my problems. I don't worry about tomorrow too much because I don't have the fear anymore. And I don't worry about the insecurity, what that brings. And I, I have my past, I won't close my door on it, but I can no longer live in the remorse of that because when my son died and I became a full blown alcoholic, I was sitting on a pity pot that's bigger than this room. Mm -hmm. And I've given that up, and I just want to stay uh, 
spiritually fit by doing the things that's gotten me here in the last year. I'm truly, uh, uh, I'm truly a miracle in my mind, and God's given me everything and more than I could have ever expected uh, through this walk. And uh, uh, and and so, in closing, I'll I'll go forward from here. Um, and I do look forward to being in the boat. I will. Now, I wanted to mention to my my son. After five years, uh, we will be interning his ashes uh, at a cemetery at St. Peter's uh, Lutheran Church out in the country down in Hannah, in Hannah City, Illinois, and that'll be on uh, June the 13th. And I see that as a celebration of his life, um, and it's. Um, it's taken us a long time to get to that point where we can bury his ashes, and, uh, but I, I, I'm really looking forward to that, to, to give, uh, give praise to his life. And in September, or in July, uh, well, in September, I hope to be part of the uh, next uh, walk to Emmaus. I've signed up for service with them uh, so I can help other men uh, get to where I feel I'm at right now and, and even beyond. Um, and in July, I'm going to go fishing, and I'm going to be in Eric's boat. And there's going to be two boats. There's going to be two boats. But I, I can tell you, the way things have gone so far in the last year, I, I do seriously believe that we're going to catch the biggest fish out of the two boats that are in there. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. But. Uh, Anyway, that's my story, and uh, God is now, he, I threw away the rearview mirror. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry him along with, as my buddy now, because uh, I need somebody other than my own head to lift things up to, and he's going to be right there with me. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. <laughs> Doubt that there's a Lord. This is what it's all about, folks. It's a power beyond ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Ted. My pleasure. Yes, and what Ted forgot to mention is that being in a boat with me for a week last year was a tremendous spiritual experience. Yeah. All right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't left that out for a reason. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. God. God bless you. Please stand for the... Uh... Turn in. Thanks. Our Lord has seen us connect. <laughs> Shall I say, Dear 
Instead of reading it, I'd like to feel it this morning. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and the one in three. I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on the cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spice tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today the virtues of the starlit heaven, the glorious sun's life and giving ray, the whiteness of the moon at even, the flashing of the lightning tree, the whirling winds tempestuous stocks, the stable earth, the deep salt sea around the old eternal rocks. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, God's eye to watch, God's might to say, God's ear to hearken to my need the wisdom of my God to teach, God's hand to guide, God's shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, God's heavenly host to be my guard. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one, the one in three, of all all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us pray our confession to all Holy Trinity. Father God, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. Surely it is God who saves us. Because we trust in you, we make our confession to you. Father God, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. For the Lord is our stronghold and our sure defense. You are our Savior, and thus we confess to you. Father God, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, have mercy. Amen. Amen. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, 
but you have received the spirit of adoption when you cry, Abba, Father. It is the very spirit bearing witness at our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. Amen. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In Christ, by the power of the spirit, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to the God. triune God. Please be seated for the offering. relinquish and allow you to flow into their lives. So thank you, Ted, for your wonderful testimony that touched all our hearts. At this time, if you feel uh, the need to lift up a prayer to the Trinitarian God that we uh, are so blessed with, uh, speak it openly or speak it silently to yourself. Lord, I want to thank you for uh, just leading my daughter to be a servant to another lady and to help her. I looked up Linda Gardner and I thank you for the healing you're doing in her life from her stroke and that my daughter's going to be helping her and praise God in answer to prayer. Lord, please be with our son-in-law, Paul. Continue to guide him in his healing so that he will be better soon. And thank you, Lord, for bringing Ted into our hearts. Amen. Jesus. Father God, we ask you to continue to be with Ray as he struggles through his cancer. 
continue to be with um, all those, Floyd Barkley, Lindy Wellhausen, all those that are suffering with some form of cancer. Wrap your loving arms around them, Father God, and let them know that they are not forgotten nor abandoned, that they just need to look towards you to help get through until you meet again, Father God. Give their family strength. Amen. Lord, we lift up to you, Brenda, uh, from Gavin North. Uh, she seems to just need that miraculous presence in her life to finally say, yes, you are Lord of my life. So we ask for that miraculous intervention, but you will not impose yourself. She has to, to say yes, and that's what we're praying for. Uh, Brenda's got a lot of potential just hope and pray that she can live out that potential uh, with you, you by her side. Lord, I lift up uh, my daughter's pastor at, at their church. You've asked me to pray for him. I don't know what's going on, but I, I just lift him up, Lord, and ask you to touch him. Amen. Just minister to him. All these things we lift up to you in your most precious name, and let's all say, Amen. 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 For the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Come forward at the usher's direction, please. Thank you.
is rice. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep, and keep you in his love, grace, and truth. Amen. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the scattering run. transforms us and in the name of the Holy Spirit whose presence guides us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, folks. 